Hello there. If I were to throw an object, it's pretty common knowledge that I'd be able to break down the motion into two key things. First, the center of mass would travel in like a parabolic trajectory because of gravity. And then very naturally, the object would rotate about its center of mass. And if you combined those two motions together, you would get the full trajectory, right? Of this rotating object following a parabolic path. But I wanted to make this video because I want to explain why objects tend to rotate about their centers of mass and why that's such a natural point of rotation. So let's go ahead and start by remembering our kind of key rules of motion, um, which just follow from Newton's second law. So if I give you some system of particles here, right, then the net external forces on that object are responsible for accelerating the center of mass point of that system in this way, F equals MA or r double dot, where r double dot is the second time derivative of the center of masses position. And I showed that this is equivalent to saying that net external forces cause a rate of change of the total momentum of my system with respect to time. Okay, so I always kind of write these out as two separate ideas, accelerating the center of mass like this, and causing a rate of change of the linear momentum of my entire system. Okay, so I always kind of distinguish the two ideas. And then we also have um, the rotational variant of Newton's second law, that the net external torque about some point P, right, you have to define some point P that you're taking the torque about, is going to cause a rate of change of angular momentum for my system of particles about that point P, okay? So, the, so this here, this is kind of our bread and butter. These are the fundamental ideas of dynamics. We wanna be very clear and precise with our notation uh, before going on and analyzing whatever situation we're interested in. All right, so now that we're feeling good about our little toolbox of ideas here, let's go ahead and draw a stick. Okay, and this stick is made up of a bunch of particles, right? And this stick is an example of a rigid body. And as a reminder of what a rigid body is, a rigid body requires that the distances, the distances between all particles must be fixed, right? So for example, if I'm looking at these two particles, no matter what motion the stick undergoes, these particles must always have the same distance D between them. They're locked in place. They're solid relative to each other, right? And we know that this is somewhat of an approximation because of course in solids, we know that molecules vibrate by each other and so their distances aren't actually fixed. But this is kind of the key assumption of what a rigid body is. Okay, so our stick is a rigid body. The distances between each and every particle must remain fixed relative to each other. They're locked in place. And now if I go ahead and define that this stick has some center of mass here in red, this notion of rigidity already does a lot to constrain the motion of our system here, our, our system of particles, right? And it does so in the following way. We can always break down the motions into Either A, we can tr imagine translating the center of mass of our rigid body, and then B, we can imagine rotating our object about that center of mass, and then we can combine those two motions to build up any type of motion that you can possibly imagine. And if we want to ascribe a name to this notion of uh, decomposing a rigid body's motion into you know, this translation and rotation, uh, we can ascribe this as following Schultz's theorem. Hopefully my pronunciation on that name is correct. I, I'm not sure if it is, but we're just putting a name to this idea that follows our intuition. So really, to address this question, 
of why do objects naturally rotate about their center of mass, really what I need to do, because it's implied that we can break a motion down into a rotation about center of mass, really, and I'll show what I mean by this in a second, we need to show that the center of mass does not translate in a circular way when you, uh, you know, provide an impulse or you throw an object. That's kind of the key. So, I'm, so I'll go ahead and break this down uh, by looking more closely at our stick. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together. And I'm gonna simplify, you know, kind of throwing my object here, right? I'm just gonna put this stick just in space. There's no gravity, okay? And it's just floating there, you know, like we're in a space uh, station or something. And I go and I just poke the stick. I'm gonna deliver an impulse to the top of the stick just by hitting it quickly, okay? And I'm gonna deliver this impulse purely to the right. And now what I want us to do is I want us to look at these following scenarios that I've proposed here on the right. Here's option one. I imagine that the stick can go and it just, it rotates about its center of mass after I deliver this impulse and it's traveling to the right with some velocity V. And scenario two here is I hit the stick and now it's rotating about some point other than the center of mass. And it's, you know, so it's doing this kind of strange rotation. And also the entire stick seems to be moving to the right with the velocity V, right? So this point's fixed. And if we just track this point, it would be moving with V. And the stick is just kind of rotating a little bit weirdly, not about its center of mass. Okay, which one of these motions is correct and why? And to go ahead and help us analyze this, I wrote out some rules from our toolbox that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, right? So let's go ahead and with this in mind, look at this second scenario. So here I have my stick and it's rotating about this blue point instead of the center of mass. And of course we can see that by proposing this, we would have our center of mass here traveling in this circular arc, right? About this, uh, about this blue point here, it travels in a circle with this radius r, right? You can see that. But, of course, so this implies that this point, that this center of mass, has some centripetal acceleration. Okay, so this has a centripetal acceleration. But we know that the net external force acting on my stick at this point is equal to zero. We just poked the stick and now it's flying through space. There's no external forces acting on the stick. And so because of this, right, again, here's our rule down here. This equals M our double dot of our center of mass. And so uh, the acceleration on our center of mass must be equal to zero. So we cannot have this centripetal acceleration effectively, you know, pulling our center of mass inward. Alternatively, right? Now we just look back over at this first picture. Yeah. Once we deliver this impulse and there's no forces on the stick, no net external forces on the stick, Yep, it just continues moving to the right with some velocity v. Perfect. We delivered a force to the right, the stick accelerated, so now it just continues moving to the right with its velocity v. And of course, just in case anyone argues that it's possible that the stick does not rotate at all, because if the stick were just to purely move to the right with no rotation, yes, technically we would satisfy this condition here, right? That there are no external forces, so the center of mass just continues to move to the right. Remember that when we delivered this impulse, that this was some distance away from our stick's center of mass, and therefore we had some uh, external torque about our center of mass, and that changes the stick's angular momentum, which creates the rotation. So this possibility is also invalid. We are only left with one possibility, ding, 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 which is that the stick will rotate about its center of mass, 
and the center of mass will purely move to the right. Okay? That is our final answer. So hopefully this video made it clear why the center of mass is this natural rotation point for objects, right? It's because you don't require to have any centripetal acceleration pulling the center of mass, um, which you would require for rotation about any other point other than the center of mass. So hopefully you enjoyed this little video. I tried to cover quite a bit of content in it and thoroughly explore a little bit about rigid bodies and remind us about our second law dynamics. Um, thank you so, so much for watching.